So there is a house in The Sims 3 that I absolutely love. And to this day, I still think about this house. And I was thinking it'd be fun today to try and recreate it in The Sims 4. This is Sunset Valley. This was like the base game world of The Sims 3, if you guys never played it. And the house I really loved was called Modern House. And it was just over here. It's three bedroom, two bath, 77,000 roughly. at 65 Maywood Lane. And The Sims 3 was like all open world, which was really cool. And there were cars. So whenever I come back to The Sims 3, I just, I love it. I love it. And I know a lot of, a lot of folks still play it as well. Actually, let me know in the comments down below if you'd like me to play some Sims 3 on the channel. We haven't done that for a while. Anyway, this is the house. I would like to kind of recreate it in The Sims 4 in our new Crest rebuild that we're doing. It's got a mid-century vibe. It is a bit similar to one of the houses in Oasis Springs you might recognize. I just love the zigzag roof style. I don't think we'll do a car garage because we don't have garages in The Sims 4, but we should be heavily inspired by this. So not recreating it exactly the same, but we're gonna utilize the floor plan. I'm just gonna take a few pictures and create something similar, heavily inspired by this. So let's just take a look around. It's got a galley, oh, not really a galley kitchen, but like a pretty big kitchen, lovely lounge room, lots of big windows. It kind of gives a little bit of the pavilion house style with the big floor to ceiling windows. Uh, and yeah, three bedrooms, two baths, this is a bit of fun with the tires. We've got a pool at the back and probably my favorite part of this house is actually this internal courtyard right here with the sand uh, tiles I really like too. So that is what I was thinking of doing. A little bit of a mid-century house build. Before making this video, I had asked my members on the channel, thank you members for your support, which house in The Sims 3 we should recreate in The Sims 4. And a lot of members said modern house, but the other most popular one was this house over here, which is actually the Crumplebottom house, Agnes Crumplebottom's house. So I'm also gonna show you guys this because I wanna see if you guys agree with the members that we should also have a go at building this house too. We could also maybe maybe incorporate a little bit of the crumple bottom law as well, but this is the house. It's just kind of unusual, but pretty cool. I think we could take a lot of inspiration from this and maybe lower the roofs a bit to make it look maybe a bit nicer in The Sims 4 and I'd change out some of these windows. But yeah, let me know if you think we should give this a build as well. And if you're interested in becoming a member, I often ask members for channel feedback about what videos we should do. There's behind the scene videos, uh, members only challenges, how I edit, make thumbnails, all of that good stuff. So there's a link in the description down below if you'd like to become a member and support the channel that way. Also, I loved this room because it was like a half built nursery, like half the wallpapers up, half the flooring's done. I just thought that was always really cool. But let's jump into The Sims 4 and start building modern house. All right, where should we build this house in our new Crest save. So far, we've, we haven't we have done many builds yet at all. But bit by bit, we're gonna get there. Maybe Fern Park, I actually had a map already planned. Okay, according to my map that I created <laughs> and just wrote on, uh, this was gonna be a vet and a dog park over here. So we don't wanna build on that one. This one looks too small. I mean, let's have a look at it. Otherwise we might have to go to one of the bigger lots. I mean, we could probably fit it on here if we get rid of the pool and we make it slightly more narrow. And I feel like we're gonna have to make it slightly more narrow anyway to fit it into the world. So let's get started, shall we? I'm gonna be looking to the side to look at the reference images a bit. So we'd have some kind of a path and then, I don't think we had a fountain tool in The Sims 3, so. It's nice we can use this instead of a fully fledged pool in The Sims 4. And like I said, we're not making like literally the exact same house. We're heavily inspired by it. So the main bedroom and the bathroom would be taking up this part. So I think we do actually need to make this a little bit longer because we're gonna need a width of four tiles here. So that means we can extend that back a little bit. I'm also going to continue to put placement furniture into the house as we build, just so we know that we're going to have enough room for, for all the furniture, because it's easy to get a little bit confused and not leave enough room as you build, and we don't want that to happen. Okay, so that could be wider. There we go. So big room, elongated bathroom, 
or the bathroom could be that big if we wanted. And then there was a corridor going this way with the internal courtyard right here, which is obviously just a touch smaller. Corridor going up this way. Could be a bedroom here. I should make that slightly smaller for the bathroom. I reckon the bathroom is gonna look really big in The Sims 4. So I'm tipping we'll adjust this a little bit or even make, I don't know, we'll come back to it. As long as we get the initial shape going, then we can just revisit stuff and edit it a bit. So this is where they actually have the kitchen at this back portion of the property. So it was against this wall. And then they had an L-shaped counter, which again, I'm not sure I want to do. If we did want to go and do the same type of thing, then this would need to come back a little bit, which means this needs to come back a bit too. Kind of like that, I think. Or actually the L shape would be in line with this. So it would actually be like that. So roughly this. I think it'll look better if it's not as big anyway, because there's a lot of space that's quite empty in the original build. Okay, then the dining table is over here. It might actually look quite nice to have half walls around this. I'm gonna experiment with that and pop those in so I don't forget that that's an idea we have. But I don't mind that idea of doing, you know, something like that. A little bit unusual. How much room have we got on that side? Two tiles. Oh yeah, we need to make it. I was gonna say, do we need to make it an even amount of tiles on both sides? No, we don't, because it's actually not even on the original house. This uh, side of the house is a little slimmer. Okay, now I can't see anything. Let's just dump in some of these saucy sauces. Okay, I'm also gonna put on the BB Move Objects Uncheat. There we go. I reckon this is gonna be a really nice house. I can just feel it. I feel a good, I feel a good build coming on you guys. And then they had an angled dining table. I'm not sure if we'll keep that. And then the lounge room was over on this side and I don't know how well we're gonna fit the lounge room in. They had a two seater here. And then they had three seaters on either side like that. So for us, I mean, I would use this wall as the TV wall maybe. Oh, do we want to use that wall? I'd just modify it a little bit. Or do we just want to make it a tile wider and just have the extra room? And then down here is just like an awkward seating area. So we could turn that perhaps into a home office. Okay, how are we looking? I mean, that's utilized the width of this lot really well, and we're still gonna have room at the back to create a patio area and maybe a pool. So we can still have the pool section too. They had a, a couple of details like this coming off as well. Okay, revisiting these bedrooms. These are just absolutely massive. <laughs> they are so huge. I'm just gonna put some doors in. Like, this is a lot. I mean, these guys could have their own bathrooms, or at least one of them could have an ensuite, and then this could be the main bathroom. Or another thing I do like to do is just add little desk nooks. I always feel like that looks quite nice. Let's turn that into main bathroom, and this can be their bathroom. Add another door there, and then this will be our main door. And we want floor to ceiling doors and windows. We want that mid century pavilion style of home. We could do this. I mean, this house is lighter on the exterior, so these doors could look really mid-century if these handles weren't curved like that. Such a shame. But I mean, I get why they did that, because it's a greenhouse pack that that comes with, so it makes sense. I suppose we just need to decide what kind of windows we're gonna be using to then also pick a door. We could just go base game. Let's just go the base game windows and then we can do a base game wall if we want to or we can keep this growing together door frame if we want. It's a shame these windows aren't uh, three tiles wide because that would be perfect because I think that's what they were like in The Sims 3. I mean, these windows are three tiles wide, but they stick out a lot and we don't have... Oh wait, not these ones. What am I talking about? These ones I was going to talk about. These ones are three tiles wide, which does match the original Sims 3 house, but they stick out a lot, which isn't so bad until we want to have a matching singular tile window, and we don't. Okay, I think, yeah, the base game windows do look the best with the doors. It's just simple. 
It's nice. Um, so we'll fix up the wallpaper in a little while. But I think we have our floor plan and general gist of windows and doors sorted out. And I'm really happy with it. I also like that we have this extra room down here that you can turn into an office or an extra bedroom or whatever you want. Now the back here, we should take a little bit of inspiration, I think, from the original, even though in the original, the pool was on the side. But one thing I did really like that they did was they actually alternated the tiles like this. So it had a nice grass pattern on it. Oh no, I messed it up. I just find that to be a little bit fun. And then the pool wasn't even very big. It was a bit smaller in size, kind of like this. And they had a nice clean fence around the lot. Oh no, it's ruined our beautiful flooring. Oh no, it's, a, it's all good. It's all good. Maybe we just do this at the back of the house. And then they had the little fence framing some of the grass space, kind of like this. Wait, is that even doing anything? Why isn't that placing? That's so weird. Oh no, is this like glitched? I think it is, cause it, oh, now, no, we're, we're building on the wrong level. So I can't build any fences down here? What happens if I open this up a bit? Okay, now I can. Well, that's funny. I think this will look nice cause it will frame our little checkerboard thing that we've done here. And then we can also do the same at the front, almost, although we can't, connect this to the front tile of the driveway, unfortunately. Maybe we just have a regular path at the front and we don't include this. Okay, I feel like we are definitely going to need a flamingo in this house. Now, when I close this fence line, it's still gonna delete that fencing. What if I do like a, hmm, I was gonna try and do like a sneaky open but close it, but it's not gonna fall for that either. So, Maybe one side doesn't have the full height fence and instead we do like a hedge fence over here. Ooh, or I've never done this before with this hedge, but we could size it up. Does it look weird or does it look... I actually don't mind it, but I don't love it. Let's go like this instead. Yeah, we'll layer those and create this and then... Or maybe we go like this. So there's like two halves of the fencing. Yeah, and I think with some trees and some furniture and some landscaping, this will turn out looking quite nice. Okay, now let's move on to the roofing. I'm just gonna save this so we don't lose anything because that is the worst. And the roofing is the part I'm really excited about. It's actually a little bit tricky, this roofing. You're gonna have to think about this for a second. So well, I think only one tile goes here. Wait, how am I gonna do this in The Sims 4? So we can do one half of the roof on this side, like that, and we flip it. And we want a hole in the middle of this build. So I'm gonna slide this across and push this down over this roof line. I wanna lower it down to the same height. And this is kind of the tricky part. We can have this roof line over here, but we want to extend this side over to here. Oh, but we want something here. Mm. I think for The Sims 4, we might need to pull this over. If you hold down Alt, you can adjust this a little bit more carefully. You can use Shift to just select one side of it. But then these sides are not even, are they? Um, uh, it's uneven. Hmm. So one of these sides actually need to come in by one tile. I actually think it makes more sense for this side to come in one tile because I feel like all of our bedrooms here are really nice and balanced. Oh wait, I'm so silly. No, I'm doing it all wrong because the point is to create a zigzag here. Oh girl, you're doing it all wrong. We want the roof to go the same way on this section and then go the other way on this section. So this is the correct roof line, but we don't want walls here. So the problem we've run into here is in The Sims 3, you could actually delete individual like roof walls, essentially. Um, and we can't do that in The Sims 4. So the only thing we can do is kind of give the illusion of there being walls under here, which we could try with platforms or half walls. So I don't know, let's just kind of give it a crack and see if we can make it look okay. Actually, oh, it's not. It's not beautiful. 
Oh, oh, actually, that's pretty good. Oops, that's pretty good. But it is going to just come through the ceiling slightly. Hmm. I mean, it really, if we pull this over a little bit more, it might make it a little less obvious, you know? I mean, look, if you don't know about it, I feel like you might not notice it. So I'm going to say that's pretty good. And the other good thing is this middle section here. In the original, they actually just had this as a platform as well. So we don't actually have to feel too bad about that side not working. But I wish we could delete individual roof tiles and I wish we could place or just extend like one tile of the roof. That would be really awesome. Also, when we put roof trim on, if we wanted to put like thick roof trim on, that also helps cover it up a bit more. Uh, I mean, actually the thick roof trim doesn't look the worst on this house, but I'd probably go a little, a little lighter personally. <gasps> I love this house so much though. I'm loving it. I am absolutely loving it. The thing I'm not loving is the back of this. Um, we need to make this look better. Maybe we do like a, a bit of a thing here. Actually, we could just put a platform on top of this. Yeah, let's just put a platform here and we could either rise it above the roof so it looks like a, kind of looks like a chimney in a way. We could just pull it down and make it a bit of a feature of the house. I mean, I'll admit, I don't really know what this is, but what it is is interesting. All right, oh, we just like, we just get rid of it and we just have a plane back to the house like this. Maybe we just do that. Maybe it doesn't need to be any different. All right, so next up we need to, what's going on here? What is that? There's this shadow. Can you see, you guys see that shadow line, right? Is that a trim? No, it's not a trim. Weird. It's on here as well. That's so weird. Why are such things happening? So the outside of the house in The Sims 3 is a light green, like a very light green, minty, minty fresh, I would say. It looks very dated. I don't think it fits into our new crest, but we can get a little bit of inspo from it. And then it also has vertical light panels. They're kind of like, actually, no, not like this. <laughs> kind of like this, actually, no, not at all. Kind of like this. Ooh, actually the green doesn't look so bad. I think it's more the texture that I'm not sold on. Wait, what other green textures do we have? I love that with the Sims 4 Horse Ranch, they updated the colors of a lot of these tiles because they're so good for mid-century houses now. Like how good are these? They look so good. Uh, maybe we go with the lighter colors. That looks amazing. And actually we could potentially use those indoors. Actually, no, I take that back. It's too much. <laughs> I mean, I like it outside as well, but I probably wouldn't match it with the green patches. I would just have it across the whole thing, which I think that looks good. And by the way, if you've noticed that this floor tile is higher than this side, that's because that's how it is in the original house in The Sims 3, which I like things that are a little bit odd or uneven. Um, I think I like this darker wood on the exterior of the house. I think that looks good. And then this green is slightly darker as well, but I really like it too. It's still being inspired by the original build, I think. Uh, do we want more of that tiling? I feel like this is a really big health and safety issue. In Australia, they're very strict with um, like how shallow water can be because kids unfortunately can drown in really shallow waters. So it's literally only allowed to be like that shallow, I think, unless it's got like height to it or fencing. But I'm always surprised in other countries, I, I often feel like Australia is more strict with that kind of thing, especially staircases without railings. You cannot have a staircase without a railing in Australia, but I always see on grand designs in the UK, they always have staircases without railings. And I'm like, how do they allow that? Also, I just discovered a new artist on Spotify called Petey. I think he's from America and he's got a song called Did I Mention I'm Sorry? It's really good. It's a banger. You guys should give it a listen. We're gonna go with plants I think of when I see mid-century homes and that's more green, leafy, tropical plants. I don't know if that's because that's what was fashionable back then or if it's because I know a lot of mid-century design came from warm climates, but that is something that I definitely notice. Now I gotta find the right colored bush now that we're working with a green exterior. 
That one's pretty good. So maybe let's make it look a little bit more organic. I always forget this plant comes in green. It looks really good. Especially when you have a windowless wall like this. Very nice. Gives a little bit of privacy here. We'll do some ferns over on this side. Just very simple landscaping. We'll do a mini hedge at the front here. Oh, that's interesting. Right, let me extend that. All right. Okay, now I feel like we need some rocks as well. For this inner courtyard, we do have these zen sand circles from uh, Snowy Escape. But I can't rotate it to make it the pattern that I want. So I think we're just going to have to go a straight line, sadly. But that's okay. Oh, it's doing the same thing. It won't let me put the fencing in. So strange. Well, maybe we should just do grass out here. Oh, but then that looks so odd too. Or do we just make the whole thing sand? And just put like some of the special... Oh, the snowy escape stones will look good here. I'm not sure if this is a fact, but I do feel like in mid-century design, there's a lot of Japanese influence. So I feel like a Zen garden goes quite well with the mid-century design. Not entirely sure why that is. We've got some beautiful rock formations we can use out here. Lovely. Maybe we can have a couple of plants that grow in the sand. Well, I guess cacti would. I wouldn't say that that's Japanese influence, but I think it works. Desert influence. Where are my cacti, actually? Oh, well, these look like they'd fit out here, too. Yes. A desert zen garden. That's nice. And then we can put a yoga stool out here. And maybe we can use these stones or stepping stones from Get Together out here as well. Got a little meditation stool out here. Beautiful. I have one of those right behind me over here. Oh, and then they also had the floor lights, didn't they? I think that silver would be so reflective in the sun. I'm thinking too much about this. <laughs> maybe to tie this in with the outside garden, we now need a couple of cacti out here. Actually, no, I don't think we need to repeat them out here. Although I might make the grass look kind of too perfect. Grass always looked so perfect in the 70s. I think maybe people just took a lot of pride in their lawns. I appreciate like a really nice green lawn, but I gotta say I'm not the one who can be bothered maintaining it, unfortunately. I wish I was. Not easy to keep a lawn green, especially in dry summers in Australia. At first, I didn't like this being on an angle, but I think eventually when we pick our furniture, we should keep it like that. Gosh, we need to think about wallpapers. Oh, and another thing I always do, if you guys have been watching my videos for a long time, I always make the pools dark blue. If I ever could afford to have a pool in real life, I would make a pool a dark blue color in real life as well as in Sims. I just really like it. But pools look really expensive. And then you need room for it too. So I don't know. I'm also not a big fan of chlorine. Like, yeah, I'm just not about chlorine. I'd go salt water, but that's probably more expensive too. I think for wallpapers, to keep it like not just mid-century and to keep it like contemporary, I like this ever so slightly off-white color. This is actually surprisingly from my wedding stories. It's um, it's like to it's meant to be a sun faded paint. So it kind of gives off a nice off-white color. And then I really like these. These are very mid-century. Just from base game, this is the original swatch. And I'm using the white swatch here. For the kitchen, I'm kind of into mismatching counters and countertops. It's actually surprising how many things you can put together. I mean, I'd actually love something to match the flooring perfectly, but I don't think we have those colors. If only we had creative style. Although that's actually pretty close, the spa day one. I'm just not a fan of the handles. Like I just, I don't understand the handles on this counter. I just get conf confused by it. But I guess it could be a nice change from using the same counters that I always do. But then it is going to introduce a lot of black into the build. I mean, I just think the other counters look better. I just go with these. And because all of the objects are exactly the same in every one of these counters, I think I'll also actually maybe we'll do something like this. You can always use the different pieces of counters. I mean, of cupboards and counters if you need to mix it up a little bit too. Like I might just move all of these across ever so slightly, like so slightly you can bar barely notice it. And to do that, I'm just holding down Alt. 
sneaky range hood under here, which we will also carry across to fit. And then, because we've got a little bit of room in this kitchen, we can go ahead and use a dream home decorator oven and stove. And then a sink here would be nice, I think. Bit of a gold sink moment. I can have a hidden smoke alarm up here. Hide a bin here, which in real life, you would have it built into these countertops, I think. I mean, do we want to make all of this stone? Is that a bit nicer? Oh, and we can use ceiling tiles. I keep forgetting that we have that. We could do... Ooh, what should we do? Like wood? Green? I mean, wood, look, wood would look good if the flooring wasn't also wood. Like, that's just too much. Oh my gosh, what if we did linoleum? Oh, that is so mid-century. I think it's a little much. What about just a polished concrete floor? Like, if we just did this with the wooden ceilings, and then we could do, like, wooden paneled walls, too. Whoa. Because we haven't really experimented with roof paint that much. Like, that's pretty cool. These curtains are so beautiful in this house. I think the timber flooring looks best, but it's nice to know that that's another option. What do we think of brown carpet in the bedrooms? Or like green. At least brown's easier to pair with some other colors. Because this space is just so big and vast, I think we could maybe utilize some bookshelves to just kind of break up the room a little bit maybe. Or, or maybe just one. Because that's strange. You can just see how it ends up looking. Oh, or we could use the Murphy bed. Now this is a... Another thought. Or well, maybe that's better off put in the office area. What about something like this? Hmm. We really need a two-seater version of this couch. Well, maybe we could go for like orange. It's loud, but it's cool. Maybe we just go like simple couches from Desert Lux. I was trying so hard to use really colorful couches and I just couldn't find three-seaters, two-seaters and armchairs to all go together. So maybe we have a bit of fun with the rugs. Like something like this, maybe. Oh, actually, I love these. Yes. What screen to put here? That's pretty cool. I like that. I think four is too wide, so maybe let's try making it into three. Yeah. And then do we like it in white or is it brown? Honestly, I think both can look quite good. I quite like the contrast of the white, though, personally. Okay, maybe a couple of these would look nice over here. Get some more colors in. Up a TV up here. Maybe these would look better in red. Or blue. Actually, the blue ties in with the rug. Let's put some fruit on here. I feel like we need fruit. Good, just... I find these lights from Get to Work very mid-century looking. So I always use them in my mid-century builds. And maybe we should put it on an angle just as a throwback to the original build. Well, I like that these stripes actually tie in with the navy in the lounge room. Yeah, I think that's looking nice. I changed the light to this. Um, I don't know. I just feel like it goes with this other light better. All right, and I think that can just be left as a corridor area. I suppose we could put a couple more things in the kitchen. Like a dishwasher might be nice. And coffee, we love coffee. Couple of those. Or maybe just one. And nothing fits in that glass bit, I don't think. Sadly, nothing fits on these shelves. Cool, it's looking nice. It can be really handy to use the style filters if you're ever struggling with a certain style or you just want to make it easier for yourself. According to the game, this is a mid-century shower. I actually think I prefer to use just like a regular shower. Maybe even spa day. I don't know, something that blends in easily. Maybe shower can go here and toilet can go there. What do you guys think of this basin? And then we can match the mirror with it. I like that. I think we can just do something similar in all of the bathrooms because we've got three of them. Put some little lights in as well. And then the main ensuite, not the main bathroom, the ensuite should have a bathtub like that. This one can have some orange colors in it for a change. Do a full poster in this bedroom with matching looking side tables. Some brown lights, so it's quite minimal in here. I need a wardrobe section over here as well. Let's put a couple of things on there as well. A little cute pot plant. Uh, and then a mirror in the corner. I know the exact one we want to use. 
I love this full length mirror, so nice. I actually don't think we need anything here because it's a paneled wall, so it's kind of got its own thing going on. Like it's already a bit interesting. I don't want to overcrowd it. I could put a sneaky picture over here though. Okay. This one I thought we could use this mid-century bed. I love this color, but are we doing too many oranges? Ooh, that looks cool. Or we could even do that light yellow color behind the bed because of the cushions here. That's kind of fun because it's, it's different. Or maybe a little bit more of a mango color. And that also suits the other wallpapers too. Get these side tables. Even go brown with these. Is this too much? I mean, it's interesting because it's like piled shapes in the same matching wood color. Might be a bit much. We have a dresser over here. That's pretty cool. Oh, now we've got two mirrors though. And we just need to put a couple of paintings here. There we go. Actually, maybe this room should just have floorboards. And then the other two can have the fun brown carpet. And my trusty neutral carpet. Oh, that's nice. The curtains kind of match. Uh, the wallpaper. Oh, that's fun. And some greenery. Okay, so that's pretty much the interior done. I think we just need to do a nice barbecue area outside and then that's pretty much the whole build. Oh wait, we have the office as well. I almost forgot that. Actually, let's make a barbecue section there. There we go. Lovely. Wanna match the rug color? Yeah, there we go. And then we'll just put a desk in here so this room can also double as a guest room with the Murphy bed, or you can use it as an office. Very handy for the stayovers that came with uh, Get Together. We really do love these lights, they're cool. Now there might, there might not be, I was gonna say a bookshelf in the office, although we can probably actually connect this to the Murphy bed. Uh, but then the couch isn't centered with the rug, which annoys me. <laughs> might just put lights there to keep the area around it. Nice and simple. I mean, I could put this on an angle and then have a bookshelf here. Then there's also one in the hallway over here as well. Yeah. All right, you guys. Well, this is the finished house. What do you think? Do you like it? I love it. I really like this house. I just love this shape. Don't ask me what it is about this shape, but it speaks to me on some level, I guess. Let's have a look inside. It reminds me of a Pixar movie they always have mid-century homes that are really exaggerated. All right, so we walk in the front door and damn, look at that lounge room. Very nice. It's definitely mid-century on the interior as well as the exterior. Beautiful. We've got our middle courtyard with our meditation area, the plants or cacti, really pretty. Now let's go left here to look at the office we just did. So a nice green office. And it's not so bad being at the front of the house because you can have those sheer curtains there. Also doubles as a guest room. Loving this ceiling paint. Over here is our dining table, still on an angle, just like the good old days. And outside is the barbecue area. Lovely pool, basic clean grass and a flamingo. And if we go back in, our kitchen is just here to the left. Get your kitchen in there with the hidey hole. Let's go down the hallway into this room. So this is the mango room. I've just left the ceilings white in the smaller rooms because I felt like the wood might make them look too, too closed in. But definitely add it if you'd like to. So this is like the yellow and mango room with just a little bit of pastel blue there. Love that. And then they have their own ensuite. This could actually be a master um, bedroom, although it doesn't have the bathtub or main bedroom, I should say. The bathrooms are pretty cute. If we continue down the hallway, there's a door glitching at the end. This is the main bathroom. So the green bathroom, quite nice. If you're into the mid-century look. And then in here is our orange bedroom with the brown carpet. Another little hint of blue there. Love the puddle mirror. And then last of all, this would be maybe the main bedroom, although it is smaller than the other one. So. You either get the ensuite with the bathtub or the bigger room. And this is at the front of the house too. Oh, I need to place a couple of extra pieces of wood up there to join those curtains. Yeah, that's nice. Mirror, wardrobe, and then in here, this is the more generous bathroom ensuite. Very cute. The bathtub. 
So let me know what you thought of this house and if you have any ideas for Newcrest, what you want to do. I just thought this door would look great in the green. Yeah, that is awesome. It ties in perfectly. I was just thinking, wait, I need to change that door color. Love it when those last minute changes look really good. Um, so yeah, let me know what you think. And if you'd like to have a go at building it, feel free to. But I'll upload it to the gallery. It doesn't have any custom content in it. So if you're on console, feel free to download. But yeah, thanks for watching. And thank you so much to my amazing members uh, for supporting this channel. If you'd like to become a member, go for it. There's a whole bank of videos for you guys to watch. And it's a great way to support the channel and myself. So thank you guys for all of that extra support. It really does mean a lot and make a massive difference. And if you have any ideas for upcoming videos, please let me know in the comments down below. I hope you guys are having a lovely morning, afternoon or evening, wherever you are in the world. And I can't wait to speak to y'all soon. Da-da! <laughs>